Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Monique L. Akasi, Interim Special Assistant to the President for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Strategic Initiatives here at West Liberty University. It is indeed an honor and pleasure to be with you today um, as we prepare for our uh, virtual asynchronous DEI pop-up workshop 101. So without further ado, I would like to begin. So I'm going to share screen um, and share with you a slide that I have, PowerPoint slide. And I think we'll be able to go in. There we go. All right, and then I'll share. Okay. All right, so we should be able to see this. All right, so I present to you Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion 101 Workshop, presented by Dr. Monique Alakasi, Special Assistant to the President for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and uh, Strategic Initiatives. And this presentation uh, portions have been adopted from Katina Lane Fomby from 3M Corp, in addition to um, additional data that has been implemented here at West Liberty University. So to begin with an icebreaker, I always like to begin with an icebreaker, especially uh, when it comes down to diversity, equity, and inclusion. So what I want you to do, I want you to think of a time, then this can go all the way back to those good old middle school days, high school days, elementary days, elementary school days, or um, uh, daycare. Uh, it could be from college, it could be from undergrad, grant, but think back and reflect on those days, right? And so what I want you to do, I want you to take one minute to share with a colleague a time when you've felt invisible, alienated, ostracized, and or voiceless, okay? And so what we're going to do, I'll start the stopwatch and you'll have 60 seconds to uh, go to a colleague and share a memorable time when you felt this way, okay? And then they'll share with you as well. And then after that, uh, when a stopwatch uh, rings, then you'll go to your next colleague. We'll do, we'll do this around three times, and I call this a speed meet, all right? Icebreaker speed meet for DEI, all right? Okay, so because this is asynchronous, I'm going to give you 60 seconds, and I just want you to jot down, uh, you know, you can text it to yourself or type it or uh write it on a post-it note, but think about that time, okay? Take 60 seconds and I will do the same and we will begin now. Ten seconds. Okay, that's our ringer. Time's up. All right, so I hope that you were able to uh, jot down a memory. I'll share a memory with you, and please feel free to share your memories 
uh, with me as well. Um, you can email me anytime at monique.acasi at westliberty.edu uh, because I definitely want to get to gather a collection of um, memoirs uh, from as many people as we can um, among our West Liberty University family regarding this icebreaker speed meet. So I'm sharing with you a time um, going back to middle school. I was, I was born and raised in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, and, and I love growing up in the Midwest. My parents grew, worked for Kroger grocery stores. They still work for Kroger's. Uh, here we are 40 plus years later and they're still at Kroger's back in Ohio. Um, but we moved to a different neighborhood and we come from a um, working class background. Uh, challenged by socioeconomic um, barriers, but nevertheless, we, my parents were always hard workers, and they instilled that in us uh, with no excuses. And so um, I started a new school, um, you know, in middle school, um, sometimes things happen, you know, you're changing, developing, and so forth. And so my voice started to get um, very high-pitched and sort of squeaky. And at that time, I was wearing high-water pants, and high-water pants are back in style again. Uh, but at that time, and I'm telling my age now, but at that time, um, I was teased because of my squeaky voice and my high water pants. And we know high water pants, you know, pants that don't go all the way down to the ankles. And so I was teased, teased a lot, teased to the point where I was even to call Steve Urkel for some of you that remember the show Family Matters. Oh, and that just really, it got to me. And so what do we usually do when we get teased about things growing up? You know, some of us will speak out but many of us will go back into our cocoon and go into a state of silence. And that's what I did. I thought being silent would just make everything uh, better again, that, people, that they would stop teasing me about it. But you know what happened. It only made matters worse uh, because I was silenced and I was allowing um, the teasing to go on by not speaking up about it, but we know it's a process and it's not always easy for someone to just speak up, especially, you know, um, about things so sensitive and delicate. So that went on for a while. Um, and then one day I just got tired of it and I spoke up about it and I realized the power of speaking up and being transparent about how it was making me feel. Um, and I'll never forget that day, you know, my Angelo, the late great poet, my Angelo, once uh, one of my favorite poems, I know why the cage bird sings. And oh, is it so true? Oh, is it so very true? But that's one of my moments where I felt invisible and voiceless. Um, well, more so voiceless. My voice was, I felt as though it was stripped from me. But the day I gained it back was the day that I spoke up. And so many of us out there can relate. You know, these are universal themes of times when we felt invisible, alienated, ostracized, and so forth. And why am I sharing this icebreaker with you? And I want you to share it among yourselves and with me as well. Um, because there are times where we're in a world now where it's rapidly changing. And some of us cannot relate or understand uh, some of the different things that are going on in our world, if you will. When that happens, if you ever meet someone that's different or from a totally different background or culture than you, go back inward. Remember this icebreaker. You may not be able to relate because you didn't come from their same background or experience what they did, but go back to that time when you felt invisible, alienated, ostracized, or voiceless. And think about how you were able to rise above it. Think about how it made you feel. And if you do that and go inward, that could be the start of trying to understand, listen, and have empathy for those who may have different uh, life experiences from our own. Okay. All right. So we're going to continue. 
So here at West Liberty University, it is truly an exciting time here on the Hilltop. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, we have an advisory board and we have been working on a working draft for our mission and vision. And so far, it is the following. West Liberty University's diversity, equity, and inclusion's mission in alignment with the university's mission is to provide a nurturing environment of diversity, inclusion, and equity in our community where everyone is respected, valued, included, treated fairly, and welcomed regardless of one's race, gender, sexual orientation, disability, religion, ethnicity, nationality, and or socioeconomic status. The Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion's commitment to diversity is steered by our core values of affordability. Our vision, West Liberty University's Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion envisions to evolve into a premier model for an inclusive educational and cultural experience through workshops, activities, training, development, and celebration of a diverse student, faculty, and staff population and workforce. Currently here at West Liberty University, when I first started at the end of January uh, 2022, the first thing I wanted to know uh, is the following, because I am data-driven. I decided, I said, let me get ready to go on a listening tour. And this listening tour will include listening to faculty, staff, and student and alumni in the global community, listening to everyone, having lunch, having tea, having coffee with people, right? Learning the culture, not just rolling my, up my sleeves and immediately taking off running and saying, this is the plan, no. I wanted to hear from you, your voices matter. And so I took my time. I'm still on a listening tour and I'm learning from you, learning the culture, right? Because we're in this together. I can't do it alone. I need all hands on deck. We're all architects on building our own customized DEI initiative here at West Liberty. We know that DEI, um, Initiatives are not a one size fit all. What works for one university or college may not work for ours and vice versa, because we know our family here. We know our students, we know our faculty and staff, right? And because of that, we know what works and what will not work, okay? And so with that, I started with, I needed some type of data as well in addition to the listening tour. So I sent out an anonymous survey to faculty, staff, and students to get your views and feelings about DEI. In addition to that, I also gathered data from our uh, registrar's office and from our director of institutional uh, research here as well, uh, Maureen Golick. And so with all of this information, mixed methods, gathering quantitative and qualitative data, um, as well as ethnographic um, research, this is the following information that I've recovered thus, thus far. So I wanna share this with you, and then we're going to take a, a deeper dive into what DEI is all about. Now, keep in mind, this is an ongoing process. So I'm going to start at the top surface and throughout the months ahead, we will take a deeper dive and we will work at this collectively as we um, explore and go on this journey together regarding DEI and beginning to roll up our sleeves as the architects that we are to build our initiative together. So to begin, as you can see from our data here, when we look at faculty and staff, right, over the past five years and counting, notice that when we go back, I was able to get data going back from 
2018 to the present currently. And from the past, as far as faculty and staff, back in 2018, we only had one faculty and or staff member that identified as one of African or African-American descent, only one, okay? And then in 2019, that number went up to three, 2020, it went up to six, 2021, it went up to 13, and currently we're up to 14, but keep in mind that there are people that are still in our system as adjunct instructors who've taught for us as part-time in the past. And some of them, their um, data is still in the system and they may have um, been absent, if you will, from our university for over 10 plus years. So currently we're going off of full-time and part-time and adjunct instructors for this latest number of 14, a total of 14 uh, that I've identified as uh, being of African uh, descent or African American, okay? And then we have uh, those who identify uh, with Asian descent. Uh, back in 2018, we had three, then it jumped to four, then five, then six, and now we are up to seven. Um, and then those uh, Hawaiian Pacific, we didn't have any in 2018 or 19, but then when we got to 2020, we have one, 21, two, and present two. And then those of uh, Hispanic descent in 18, we had one, 19, one, 21, 21, two, and currently two. Uh, zero identifying of uh, Native American or Indian. And then we have a large number of unknown, those who identify as unknown, 2018, 12, 19, um, 18. 2020, we had 24. 2021, we had 26. And currently 26. And then as far as our uh, those who identify as white faculty and or staff, 2017, we had two pardon me, 2018, we had 157, 2019, we had 210, 2020, we had 342, uh, 2021, we had 425, and here we are in 2022, we have 433, so see that number has been climbing significantly among our faculty and staff while others are moving at a slow, um, a slow pace, if you will. And then when we get to the students, um, going back to 2017, those who identify as um, with two or more identifications, in 2017, we have 76. 2021, we're up to 151. Those who identify um, as Asian in 2017, we had 20. Today, uh, 2021, 27. Uh, those who identify as African or and or African descent, 2017, we had 92. 2021, uh, 97. In 2020 was our highest among uh, from 2017 to 2021. So we're wondering what happened during that time. Some um, say COVID. Um, and so we do notice that 2020, uh, this was a year for the most part, many, uh, this was at a high peak for all at this time. And then it dipped down a little in 2021. Hispanic um, in 2021, 13, and fall 17, 13 as well. Our highest again was 2020. Uh, Native American or Indian, we had two, but before that it was always one. Um, other identifying one, 
um, and 2021 as well. Before that, zeros. And then Pacific and unknown, we have two and 175. The unknown has gone down quite a bit because in 2017, it was 418. Uh, we have 1,860 identifying as white in 2021. Um, in 2017, that number was 1,964. So uh, that's gone down a little bit, but the highest was 2020 at 2,091. To date, we have um, 1,468 female and it was 1,610 in 2017. So that's gone down some. Uh, again, the highest at 2020. And then for males, 843 in 2021, 978 in 2017. Um, so that's gone down as well. And then non-identify 17 in 2021, zero in 2017. So what does this tell us? Well, this is definitely a snapshot of um, to see as far as um, what West Liberty University, our faculty, staff, and students have, are we seeing a significant difference in um, the number of um, diverse populations, if you will, that identify as African American or Asian or Hawaiian, Pacific, Hispanic, Native American, Indian, unknown, or white? Uh, are we noticing an increase or are we noticing a decrease? And what does that tell us? Okay. And then moving right along here, West Liberty University faculty, staff, and students as of spring 2022 to take um, a deeper dive here. Um, so as of today of spring 2022 among our faculty uh, to date, we are identifying the following, um, two female and four male identifying as Asian, three female, 11 male identifying as um, African and or African descent, uh, one male identifying as Hawaiian or Pacific Islander, um, two Hispanic males, uh, zero females identifying, unknown, 15 females and nine males, 215 females are white and 197 white males for a grand total of 235 females and 224 males, okay? And that's given us a grand total of 467, okay? And when we look at our students, we're seeing uh, 13 females identifying as Asian, 11 males for a grand total of 24. 1,105 females, 545 males are identifying as white for a grand total of 1,662 with 12 unknown. Two or more races, 87 females, 47 males, uh, five unknown for a grand total of 138. And then unknown, uh, 90 females, 63 males, 143 grand total. Uh, those who identify with African and or African descent, um, African-American, Black, 19 females and 65 males. So notice, um, there's more white females than males, according to this data, but when it comes to those of African descent or African-American, there are more males um, than females uh, for a grand total um, on this data, this semester, 84. Um, and then for Hispanics, we have five females and five males, two unknown for 12. And then Hawaiian Pacific, one male, American Indian or Alaskan Native, one female, for a grand total of 1,320 females and 737 males, 18 unknown. What is this telling us? 
Well, it is very, it is quite interesting that for uh, those who identify um, as white, it looks like we are seeing more females than males, right? But then, interestingly enough, when it comes down to uh, people of color, for the most part, we are seeing um, the majority, if you just put all people of color together for the majority, we're seeing a paradigm shift where there are more males of color than females of color. And why is that? Where is that coming from? Okay. All right. Now we do know that from additional data, many of the males of color um, are also athletics, right? And females as well. Um, and so there's a big athletic population of people of color. Uh, not as many for academic scholarships, but more so for athletic scholarships. And so we need to explore um, and try to um, analyze even deeper uh, the correlation between the athletics and uh, people of color and that number uh, being represented uh, with more males than females. And why is the academic, the academic um, scholarship presence or those who are who um, come to the university, why is why is the academic presence um, and scholarships for that lower than the than uh, for the athletics recognition and the athletic scholarships for those of color? Uh, but that will definitely be an ongoing conversation. All right. So when I uh, wrote out the anonymous survey, there were a plethora of questions and many people answered. And I was very grateful for that. I will share in its entirety the data and the findings as well. But I'm going to share with you um, snapshots, if you will, of some of those findings in this presentation with our workshop as well. As you can see um, on this question, 101 people answered, West Liberty University has a diverse student body. Okay, you notice that the majority, 45.54% agree, 17.82% strongly agree, but then we have 14. 85% disagree and 3.96% uh, strongly disagree. Now, the interesting part about this type of data, when you are collecting data regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion, quantitative data won't always give you the, uh, the information that you're looking for because with quantitative data, if the majority um, of mainstream society is, if they're the majority, then you're going to get um, more majority views um, regarding this. But when it comes down to a marginalized group, they're already marginalized on campus in small percentages. So of course, their data from a quantitative perspective will never show uh, the true uh, information that one is trying to um, look into, if you will. So that's when we bring in qualitative data. And qualitative is where you actually have those one-on-one -on -one conversations um, and those interviews to get qualitative feedback. Uh, so here we see from a quantitative perspective that it appears it's a diverse student body. You know, there's nothing going on. But when we look at it on a qualitative uh, level and speak one-on-one -on -one with students. There are a large number of minority students, students of color, that have said that 
uh, there have been times where they felt invisible um, or not included. Uh, you know, we can say, yes, we're diverse, but how many are feeling included or a part of a sense of belonging? And so that's definitely something that we want to explore more collectively. All right. And then I believe West Liberty University should not be a diverse institution. Now we have the majority uh, disagree with this. Like basically saying, no, we should be diverse, right? And that's why you see that large bar because basically 70% are disagreeing saying, no, we need to be diverse. We should, we don't want to entertain not being diverse, right? And then uh, you have those that disagree at 20% as well. However, um, we had, 2.97% that agreed and 1.98% that strongly agreed that said, no, I don't want West Liberty to be diverse. And so while we celebrate the majorities quantitatively saying, oh no, let's move towards diversity. We still, again, from a qualitative and again, that those open-ended questions on a survey helped to answer, to dive into the mind of those who believe, nope, we don't want diversity. And I will share that qualitative information with you in our next presentation for the town hall uh, virtual meeting, okay? So the organizational chart here for the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, um, it's pretty much, it's an alignment. As you can see here, uh, we have the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at the top. And then lateral, you have the DEI Advisory Committee. Okay, and that's focused in on students, followed by, um, pardon me, the DEI Advisory uh, Committee for students is focused on students, but we also have the DEI. I advisory, and that consists of uh, faculty, staff, students, and people in the global community. So we have our advisory board, and then we also ha um, have our committee, the student focus, okay? And then we have our uh, DEI committee for employees and staff. And that's where um, that's also broken up into uh, different colleges, schools, and departments, and having the DEI presence as well. We're also excited about working collectively with our uh, faculty and staff to come up with a DEI statement uh, to be embedded into um, syllabi as well, uh, while still, of course, uh, making sure that people have their their um, their freedom, if you will, with you know with their uh, syllabi, but making sure that we also have some type of statement regarding uh, the importance and how we support diversity and equity, meaning fairness and inclusiveness, making sure that everyone's having a sense of belonging and feeling included both in and out of um, the classroom here at West Liberty University. And then of course, um, our DEI marketing um, committee uh, is big. We're going to start uh, having our social media presence, um, as well. And then we also have our media, uh, which we're very grateful for, uh, that covers a lot with DEI initiatives. And then our international DEI committee, um, and that's for our international students presence and faculty as well. So pretty much any DEI initiative that's happening here on campus, anything that's dealing with diversity, equity, and inclusion, is indeed under the auspices of the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And so it is our goal to make sure, so basically we have all of these little dots, all of these 
exciting initiatives and um, innovative projects and, and so forth going on on campus. So the Office of DEI, we basically, we want to connect the dots and make sure that we all have um, a space where all of the amazing and exciting activities and initiatives and programs and, and so forth that are going on that we all celebrate it under the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. So from our uh, findings thus far, and again, this is ongoing with quantitative and qualitative research and the listening tour that I'm still on at this beautiful campus. So during the first 60 days plus, um, we're heading into 90 days now um, of assessment through quantitative, qualitative, and interviews with students, faculty, and staff, findings show that while West Liberty University has a long history of less diversity among students and employees of marginalized groups, i.e. people of color, LGBTQIA+, uh, disabilities, first generation, the majority of faculty, staff, and students at the institution want and support diversity, equity, and inclusion. The majority are open to learning more about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and the majority sincerely want to become more aware of high-impact practices to dismantle unconscious biases, uh, prejudgments, and the list goes on. West Liberty University has the potential and ability to lead among diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives, not only in the state of West Virginia, but nationwide. In order to take the lead as the model rural serving institution that we are for diversity, equity, and inclusion here on the Hilltop, we must evolve into being proactive, not reactive. We must all commit to the DEI workshop trainings and become actively engaged through our television station that's rolling out, um, our academic journal that's rolling out, uh, the newsletter publications, the collection of ongoing um, assessed data regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion from each unit or division each year, and all faculty, staff, and students must hold each other accountable. We're in this together. All faculty, staff, and students must all be committed and dedicated to cultivating our awareness, knowledge, and wisdom regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion at West Liberty. This report is a living document and ongoing reports will be taken, assessed, and honored accordingly, okay? So what exactly is diversity? Well, diversity by definition is differences in racial and ethnic, socioeconomic, geographic, and academic professional backgrounds. People with different opinions, backgrounds, degrees, and social experience, religious beliefs, political beliefs, sexual orientations, heritage, and life experiences, and the list goes on. It's almost like, and so many people have used this example, if we were going to bake a cake, and I don't mean just any cake, but the cake of cakes, all right? Um, so, and say each person held a critical ingredient for making the cake. Can you imagine if someone stood and siloed and said, I'm not giving you my eggs, or I'm not giving you my sugar. I mean, we all would be a little upset, like, wait a minute, we need you, we need those eggs, we need that sugar. And the list goes on to make the cake of cakes. What are you talking about, right? And so with that being said, we don't want to take our sugar and our milk and, you know, and our creams and vanilla extracts. We don't want to take all of that and make it as one, you know, if, if, if for instance, if one had eggs and said, okay, you all have to turn into eggs, then we wouldn't have a cake, right? So the same holds true with diversity. We're not trying to make everybody the same. We want to celebrate each other's differences because when we all bring those ingredients, all of those differences together, ooh, we have an amazing cake celebrating differences while being inclusive at the same time. And that's what we call the mix. 
So according to Carly Hobbs, um, communication specialist, people often relate diversity to race and sometimes gender and more recently, sexual orientation. She says, I think this is a pretty narrow view of what diversity means. It can also be ways of thinking and your intellectual background and training as well. So that brings us to inclusion. What exactly, what is in inclusion? Well, inclusion involves bringing together and harnessing diverse forces and resources in a way that is beneficial. Inclusion puts the concept and practice of diversity into action by creating an environment of involvement, respect, and connection where the richness of ideas, backgrounds, and perspectives are harnessed to create business value and overall success. Inclusion is making the mix work, okay? And this is pulled from Diversity Journal, moving from diversity to inclusion. So what is Di what is the difference between diversity and inclusion? Okay, as Tiffany Jana uh, describes in, from TMI Consulting Incorporated, diversity is simply a representation of many different types of people. Diversity often focuses on the differences and is referred to as the mix. Inclusion is the deliberate act of welcoming diversity and creating an environment where all different kinds of people can thrive and succeed. Inclusion is the act of making the mix work. Diversity is what you have. Inclusion is what do you do with what you have? So simply having a diverse group or team or workforce or classroom is just not enough. Everyone should feel safe and encouraged to fully participate, share ideas, be seen, be heard, be acknowledged, be respected, be involved, and be on equal footing as everyone else. So why does diversity matter at college anyway? According to Aaron Thompson, professor of sociology at Eastern Kentucky University and co-author, uh, Jose uh, Cuseo from Diversity and the College Experience. One, diversity expands worldliness. College might be the first time you have had the opportunity to have real interaction with people from diverse groups. Two, diversity enhances social development. Interacting with people from a variety of groups widens your social circle by expanding the pool of people with whom you can associate and develop relationships. Three, diversity prepares students for future career success. Successful performance in today's diverse workforce requires sensitivity to human differences and the ability to relate to people from different cultural backgrounds. And four, diversity prepares students for work in a global society. No matter what profession you enter, you'll find yourself working with employers, employees, coworkers, customers, and clients from diverse backgrounds worldwide. Interactions with people different from ourselves also increase our knowledge base. Research consistently shows that we learn more from people who are different from us than we do from people who are similar to us. And of course, again, this is a continuation of Aaron Thompson and Jose, um, Joe Cuseo from Diversity and the College Experience. Diversity promotes creative thinking. Diversity expands your capacity for viewing issues or problems from multiple perspectives, angles, and vantage points. Diversity enhances self-awareness. Learning from people whose backgrounds and experiences differ from your own sharpens your self-knowledge and self-insight by allowing you to compare and contrast your life experiences with others whose life experiences differ sharply from your own. And diversity enriches the multiple perspectives developed by a liberal arts education. College diversity snapshot. According to Niche, the ranking compares socioeconomic, geographic, 
and ethnic diversity of students and staff, as well as the overall level of tolerance on campus. So we're going to look at niche on the rankings of the most diverse universities and colleges in our country. The top five diverse colleges, U.S. national, universities and colleges and diversity. Can you guess, let's take a moment, can you guess um, regarding universities and colleges here in our country, who do you think is number one in regards to most diverse? Who's number two? Who's number three? Who's number four? Who's number five? Take a moment, think about it, and let's see. Let's see if you're right. Well, number five, Amherst. Amherst in Massachusetts is number five as most diverse college in America, followed by Andrews University in Michigan, number four, most diverse colleges in America, followed by number three, Stanford University in Stanford, California, number three for most diverse colleges in America. And then Number two, Lynn University in Florida. Number two, most diverse in America. And finally, da, 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 number one, Pomona College in California, the number one most diverse college in America. Wow. Do you know where West Liberty University stands as most diverse university or college in the state of West Virginia? Someone said at the bottom, someone said in the middle. Well, guess what? According to Niche, we are number eight. Can you believe that? We are number eight and we're coming for number one. We're coming. Yes. I'm a realist and I think it can happen. If we work collectively together, we can take the number one spot and become the model for the state of West Virginia. All right, so when time permits, please try to interact, have conversations with colleagues from your group. Uh, stop by my office. I'm right here in Main Hall. I have an open door policy. You can stop by any time in 208. Uh, uh, Pardon me, I'm, I'm over in Shaha um, and uh, 208 University Drive, West Liberty, West Virginia, 26074. At any time, um, I am so willing to meet with you and to talk to you uh, about this. You can email me at monique.acasi at westliberty.edu. The following question, I want you to ponder it. How can you embrace your diversity? As an administrator or faculty or staff or one that's actively involved in the community here in West Liberty, how can you embrace your diversity? That means embrace it without losing it. Don't always think that you have to lose who you are to fit in. No, we celebrate those differences. And how can you embrace others? How can you embrace students, faculty, and staff's diversity here at West Liberty University? Okay? So think about that. Here are some recommendations by Refine the Mind, Embracing Diversity. How to embrace your diversity and other people's diversity? One, everyone's narrative. Consider your own life. Go back to that icebreaker that we had as well. Consider your own life and everything that has shaped your beliefs. Realize that each of the seven plus billion people on this planet has their own narrative. Not one, not one is the same, but we do have those universal connections of feeling invisible, voiceless, alienated, ostracized, voiceless at some point in our lives. Where are you coming from? When you find yourself thinking poorly of someone, stop and consider what influences have created your negative views of that individual. 
Three, befriend all people. This takes a lot of energy, right? And make sure that you know that niceness is not a form of weakness. It takes a lot of strength to be nice, right? So if you know that you tend to avoid befriending certain types of people, go out of your way to find friends of all kinds. And four, empathy. When you encounter anyone, try to imagine, understand, and sympathize with that person's story, with everything that has made them who they are without being judgmental. Actively accept. Meditate upon embracing other people with all of the diversity that comes with them. Don't allow yourself to define a person based upon one stereotype about one aspect of their complex identity. And show compassion. Perform random acts of kindness for all types of people. It can be as simple as a friendly smile or holding open a door, which I see a lot here on campus. And finally, I can't believe that we're almost finished with our workshop, but I have a video for you, Respect and Inclusion at Delui. And so I'm going to play this for you, but before I do, um, at any time, if you'd like to share, if you're um, actively participating in this workshop, um, by choice, you can always share with me and I do provide certificates of completion. You would just email me um, at officeofdei at westliberty.edu. Again, that's officeofdei at westliberty.edu. And just share with me a summary of this workshop and your personal response, personal reflection on how you can take some of the pointers and tidbits from this first 101 workshop and apply it to your profession. And any questions you may have, this is a judge-free zone. You can ask me anything. You can come by anytime and it is confidential. Okay. I'm here for you. All right. And, and once you send me that information, a summary and a personal reaction, um, I will and can administer our very own Office of DEI uh, Certificate of Completion as well. All right. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and begin the video. If I can start it here, give me one second. Okay. And I think I can pull it up here. Okay, sorry about that. Let me stop share for just a second so I can play the video. And here we are, okay. Just one. All right, here we go. I am black. Perhaps you feel more comfortable now. I'm good at my job.
I'm still good at my job. I'm still good at my job. I'm a man's man, work hard. Play gently. Work life balanced. Sometimes it's the smallest voice that has the biggest idea not suitable for the workplace, how about now? I have an IQ of 170, a first from Cambridge. Did I mention the IQ of 170? I'm just like you. Actually, I'm not. So what? How old am I? Who cares? Good enough is old enough and young enough. Do you know how you really made me feel? Inside? Be honest, is this how you really think of me? I hope not. You haven't met my partner before, have you? But that doesn't change the way you think of me, does it? You respect me for the value I bring, don't you? Don't you? Don't you? Don't you? You respect others for the value they can bring, don't you? Don't you? Don't you? Ask yourself. Thank you. All right, everyone. So I thank each and every one of you today for our DEI asynchronous workshop. I hope that each and every one of you um, have been able to learn. Um, sorry about that. Sorry about that, we had a little technical issue there. All right, but I hope that each and every one of you um, have been able to become inspired. Of course, this is just a, a, a preliminary introduction workshop. Of course, again, we will dive deeper uh, as the months go on. And I look forward, I'm excited about going on this journey with all of you because your voice matters. Uh, if you get a chance, please zap the QR code to complete the post survey for today's online asynchronous presentation. And I thank each and every one of you. And I also thank uh, the adaptation of this presentation from Katina Elaine Fomby and 3M Corp as well here at West Liberty University. We are on a mission. We're excited about this new chapter and we're in this together. My name is Dr. Monique L. Lacasse, Interim Special Assistant to the President for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion and Strategic Initiatives. And I look forward to hearing back from you. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks again. Bye-bye.